Hello, uh, with me today is Nelson McCausland. Nelson spent 14 years as the MLA for Belfast North up until 2017 and was a minister in the Northern Ireland Executive for five years. He currently sits on the board of Northern Ireland Education Authority. But we're not going to talk about party politics or about education. We're going to talk about religious freedom because towards the end of January, Nelson shared an article by the Gospel Coalition about the conversion of Beckett Cook, an American who lived a homosexual lifestyle until he turned to Christ. Nelson shared the testimony on his Facebook account and in response, well, we'll let him tell that part of the story in a moment. Welcome, Nelson. Uh, thanks for speaking to me today. Just uh, let's start with that. Tell us uh, what happened when you shared that article. There were a few people initially who, who liked it, who were amongst my, my friends. And then it was picked up by um, a man who's a gay activist who copied it to his Facebook page. And then there started a whole torrent of attacks. Um, there were some that were particularly abusive. Um, there were some that were grossly offensive, but it was becoming quite clearly an attack on uh, the message that Beckett Cook had shared in his testimony. Um, and that started even to the point of people starting a petition uh, to oppose what I'd said or what I'd posted. Uh, and I, it is really deeply disappointing that we live in such an intolerant age. So what, what exactly did you post? The post was one that I'd picked up from the Gospel Coalition uh, website. Um, I post all sorts of things on Facebook. Some would be humorous, some are personal, current affairs, all sorts of things. But scattered amongst it would be an occasional gospel text or a gospel song, a hymn or whatever, or a, a short article. And when I read the testimony by uh, Beckett Cook, I was really impressed by it. Uh, I thought it was a very open and honest and fulsome testimony, well set out. And something that, if I thought it impressed me, it might impress and interest others. And so I shared it on Facebook. And what got picked up was this idea that uh, it was advocating and you were advocating conversion therapy. But in fact, the article didn't say anything or said very little uh, about conversion therapy. It was, it was an article about his Christian conversion, wasn't it? Yes, it was very clearly about a Christian testimony about the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to transform lives. Uh, that was clear in the article. He didn't recommend conversion therapy. He hadn't undergone conversion therapy. Um, and in fact, one of our local newspapers contacted him and he explained to them that he didn't recommend conversion therapy, hadn't undergone it, wasn't talking about that. He was talking about the gospel. And so uh, it was disappointing that people twisted that Instead of attacking conversion therapy, what they were actually doing was using that as an excuse to attack the gospel. And that is the, the, the troublesome thing because there seemed to be almost an attempt to silence any sharing of the gospel of saving grace. That's right, because, um, well, well, let's talk about conversion therapy very briefly for a moment if we can, because it's a very broad term, isn't it? And uh, so, so let's be absolutely clear. Um, I take it that you would oppose uh, and would be happy to speak out in terms of opposing the kind of abusive practices of quack medical practitioners or the occasional charlatan preacher. Would that, that be fair? Absolutely. There are things that are totally unacceptable, such as those you suggest there. But these are largely already illegal, aren't they? Aren't they? So, so, the, so the issue is, um, is about the impact on churches and the impact on uh, the ability of churches to be able to preach repentance, to be able to pray with anyone and everyone, to provide pastoral care to LGBT people. Would you agree? Yes, there, I think that the, there is an attempt to silence anyone speaking openly about issues about uh, sin, about salvation, about the fact that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, and we all need God's salvation. Um, there's an attempt to use this almost to silence what is the clear biblical message of the fact that we need to be saved by grace through faith. Now, the, the Christian Institute is not a, it's not a party political uh, organisation, so we'll, we'll avoid party politics. Um, but it does appear that there are elected politicians uh, calling for it to be a crime, a criminal offence, uh, to tell LGBT people that they need to repent and believe in, in, 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that anyone who disagrees with with their perspective isn't fit for public office. Now, there have been calls for you to resign off the back of this. There's been calls for you to be sacked um, uh, off the back of sharing this article. Were you surprised by the level of vitriol that you received? I was indeed. Um, one of the activists actually started a petition. Um, it hasn't been overly successful, but when you look down the comments that people put on that, really, really abusive language, um, describing me as a, a homophobic, and I'll not use the other word that they followed that with, uh, all of which is totally, completely uh, untrue. The level of vitriol uh, was surprising, but I suppose I shouldn't have been surprised because one sees again and again in public life today, people being branded as homophobic or transphobic or whatever. Um, and really it is an attempt to shut down a discussion, attempt to silence people, to squeeze out and exclude uh, views with which they disagree. Do you think it's a deliberate attempt to do that? The, the torrent of comment that you get, the vitriol behind it, um, some of it, the language is quite vicious. Uh, and I, I think there the intention is, yes, to intimidate people and to push particularly Christian and socially conservative voices out of the public square, to silence that, to dominate that and control that. Have you felt intimidated? It's unpleasant, and I wouldn't deny that. But I wouldn't feel intimidated by it, or I wouldn't be silenced by it. Um, it's a, the New Testament tells us we should expect such things. Um, it, it warns us that just as the Savior was attacked and criticized, so those who seek to follow him would be attacked and criticized. So we shouldn't be surprised. But it is unpleasant. And I think people who are unaccustomed to it, uh, who come from maybe quieter backgrounds, who, who have not had any involvement in political affairs or public affairs, might well be intimidated and silenced. And, and that's troubling. So there have been uh, suggestions at Westminster um, that uh, conversion therapy should be banned. And then we don't know what would fall under the scope of, of such a ban. But certainly there are some who would say that prayer and pastoral care and preaching should be part of that. Um, the ministers in Stormont who've expressed support uh, for a ban. Um, is this something you think we're at the stage now where Christians need to take seriously the, the um, possibility that proposals may be brought forward to to ban conversion therapy in a way that would be in, encompass core activities of the church? I, I do, because the fact that conversion therapy, gay conversion therapy that they talk about, is so ill-defined, it then becomes all-embracing and would well lend itself to opening the door for, for closing down on the gospel and silencing preachers because they speak about sin and salvation. If we go down that road as a society, we end up where a minister who preaches a gospel message at a Sunday service and puts it online could well become the target. Or if people share their testimony online, that becomes a target. The fact that people are attacking gay conversion therapy, but really using that in a sense to become an attack on the gospel and not differentiating in any way, it is the core of the problem uh, for me. So we need to be vigilant, don't we? Well, thank you, Nelson McCorson, for uh, joining me today and, and to talk about that and talk about your experience. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.